everybody, this is Marilyn with MKR Creations and today I'm going to show you how to make a simple Lego pad um, using chipboard. This, I'm using the Stamperia Dream Collection for the paper. You will need chipboard, um, two large pieces that measure 5.5 by 8.5, that's your front and back. A spine piece that is a quarter of an inch by 8.5 inches. You will need your Lego pad, and this one is 5 by 8. A pencil, bone folder, pokey tool to remove your tape, a <clears throat> ruler, score tape, um, art glitter glue, and something to cut your score tape. Then I have one piece cut out. I don't know if I will use this. I fussy cut it out. I don't know if I'll use it on the front of the cover or not. I'll decide that after I get it made and we see what it looks like. I have a piece to make a pocket on the inside. This piece measures about 5 and a sixteenth, just a little over 5 by 12. And this is going to go over top the legal pad on the inside. This is our inside piece for the inside cover, and this measures eight and a half, eight and a fourth by eleven and a fourth. And then we have a twelve by twelve piece. Now this is very tight to go on a twelve by twelve piece, but I really do not want to use another piece of cardstock um, from the collection. I just it would only be for like another inch and it just wouldn't be worth it so we're not going to do that so let's get started first thing I want to do I did draw a one inch line down here and then I came to the middle to the six and I put an eighth of an inch on each side to accommodate my quarter inch spine piece and that will help me get that spine piece in the dead center and straight because at, when we get done there will only be about a quarter of an inch on the sides and that makes it kind of difficult to fold it over so we want to make sure we are where we need to be and this one I use score tape on just because it holds quicker and then I don't have to hold it down while the glue dries so I'm going to use score tape on this piece I don't know what the weather's like where you guys are at, but we just had several days of rain. Finally, no rain today. We had um, clouds this morning and then sunshine more this afternoon. Hopefully, we get to dry out a little bit. Um, people are getting water in their basements. Sump pumps are running continually. It's just a mess. So, hopefully, we get a little reprieve here for a while. I know there's places that are very very hot and probably could use the rain and here we are getting it all so can't say we're having a drought around here anymore then I'm going to use dark glitter glue to glue down these pieces here if you use art glitter glue you want to use that metal tip that you buy separate um, some sellers do sell it right with the glue but a lot of times you have to buy it separate, which is fine, but it puts on just a small amount of glue so that it doesn't buckle your paper, and it dries fast, so it lets you keep moving on your craft project pretty quickly, too, so I really love it. Um, also, they're not supposed to ship art glitter glue when it's freezing out if it's below 32 degrees I think it is so you want to stock up on this stuff when the weather is good especially if you live in a cold climate because if you don't you're not going to get any in I have another big bottle like this and I still bought another bottle because this bottle is getting low and I don't want to run out of glue this winter 
because winter is a good time for crafting because there's not a lot else to do once Christmas is over. Those long days in January can get a little crazy if you have nothing to do. So I try to keep busy. And another thing with art glitter glue, you want to put your pen in right away when you're done because it dries very fast and then you end up with glue in your um, point or your tip there and then if you can't get it to release with the pen then you have to soak it in hot water for a while and get it to clean out that way and I have more than one tip so if that happens I'm not down and out without being able to craft I, I still have a way to do that so Okay, and I just marked an inch off on this upper part so that I could cut that off. Okay. That in the scraps. And now you want to miter your corners, but you want to stay a good eighth of an inch away from this corner here so that you don't have cardboard showing once you miter your or once you fold your corners in. I'm going to show you another trick here the Posh Paper Lady showed me showed on one of her videos and I just think it's a wonderful idea. I think it will work great. And you take these little corners that you cut off and you glue them into the corners of your cardboard here so that hopefully then if any little bit of cardboard wanted to show this will fix it. So um, I just do it. I think my corners are fine the way they are, but I've been doing this the last few times I've made this and just kind of gives you a little more peace of mind of things are covered up. So I've been doing that. There are days, you know, 12 by 12 paper seems big, but there are days I wish they made 13 by 13 like today would have been a good day to have 13 by 13 paper. So what kind of crafting things have you been doing lately? Um, tell me down in the comments there what you've been working on and what kind of things you enjoy doing as far as crafting goes. So, And also comment down there, do you have a YouTube channel yourself? Um, I would really be interested in knowing that and following you also. All right. Now we're going to put some score tape down. I have the quarter inch score tape that's going to go on these short sides. There is just a quarter of an inch there for you to stick this into. And if you do craft at home, do you do craft fairs too, or do you just craft for yourself and your family? What what kind of things? Do you like crafting for and what kind of crafts are your favorite? Okay, and you want to burnish that tape down good. Now we're going to put the half inch on the larger sides here. And we'll get that all burnished down. Then you want to start bending your paper a bit so that it gets, so it loosens those fibers, loses some of its memory, and gets the idea that you are going to be folding it over. Of 
Okay, now normally when I'm doing my books, I'll do the long side first and the short side. But since the short sides are such short pieces of paper, I'm doing them first so that this longer piece and more stable piece can help hold those up for me. So we're going to take our pokey tool and remove the covering of the tape. And then you want to bring it up starting at the center and fold it over. Then take your bone folder and burnish it down nice and tight. And then turn to the other side and do the same thing. This is also where that first bending that you did before taking off your tape helps to make that go across or to fold better for you. It's hard enough. Okay, so now you're just going to gently push in a little bit here at the corners. And this is going to help cover that cardboard when you fold this up. So take your tape off. Now again, you want to start in the middle, fold up, and go out. And use your bone folder to burnish it all down. And you want to use it on that point to make sure that it is sitting nice and flat for you. Do the same on this side where you push in the corners. Okay, now this is going to be the bottom, so I'm going to make sure that that's over here. So if you have anything that has a one-way pattern, you want to make sure you have it set so that up and down is in the right place. So now I'm going to put down some more score tape before I put the inside down. I put one on the spine and then I put two right next to the spine. And this is to help keep the spine from buckling up. Um, sometimes the paper likes to buckle there. Um, I think that's like the hardest thing I have with making albums and making books is that trying to buckle on me. Now, I know a lot of people use other double-sided tapes. Um, I've tried some others, and I did not have near the luck I have with score tape. The score tape brand by um, Sookwang is, like, the best tape I've ever found. I've had other score tapes give away on me, and I've never had the score tape from Sookwang give away on me. It's always held tight, so... I will not use anything else, especially on something I'm sewing. Um, I will be selling these at my craft fairs this year, which will be starting next month, so getting everything ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to take all the tape off of here. Well, the, the tape covers, I should say, not the tape, but the covering.
All right. Now, I'm going to double check, make sure we have this going the right direction, and we do, because this piece that goes on the inside has wording on it, and you want your wording going the right direction, because if they open it up and their words are upside down, that wouldn't be good. Okay, and take our score tape and go around the edge. Did I say score tape? I meant art glitter glue. My mom always used to say, do what I'm thinking, not what I'm saying type thing. So we'll take this, make sure we're right side up, and center it as best you can, and then push it down. Then you want to take your, to close up your glitter glue again, you want to take your bone folder and just rub it on all this, nice and flat. You want to make sure you really burnish that center where your spine is at so that when it when you fold it it does not buckle up on you okay so we're going to set that aside to dry a minute and we're going to work on our pad of paper here. So we're going to hold this, make sure it is going to fit. It does fold over quite a bit on the back, but I think that helps hold it better. So what I like to do, I take some score tape on the back. Oops, that's not going to work. Well, I'm going to have to cut that off. You don't want any going over the edge there. If I try to pick it up, it's going to just tear the cardboard here. So don't want that, but we don't want anything sticky either. Um, there we go. And then the quarter inch we're going to put on this, right on this ridge here. Again, you want to make sure it's on the ridge, not on the paper. You want to cut it close so that there's no extra adhesive. And then you're going to come in and you're going to burnish it with your bone folder. All right. Then you're going to take your covering the tape off you're going to line up your paper with the bottom of this paper I like to stand it on end here because that just works better for me then you're going to gently bend this over here and just kind of use your fingers to make it find its place and go here and take your bone folder make a nice firm push down there to try and make a nice firm crease and do the same on the front okay Now I'm going to score my paper for my pocket with my scoreboard. Okay. 
and I do half inch for the edges. And you want to miter your corners on this. It will lay better and give you a much better look to your pocket. And I'm going to double check and make sure my pocket will fit. If not, I'll have to cut it down a little bit. Basically, this is about oh, six and a quarter inches long, and for height, I just did about three and three fourths inches. It was basically just a piece I had left from cutting off the top of this. So, Let's see if it'll fit. Now we're gonna slowly. Try and bend this. Yep, that's going to work. Okay. So you want to use your bone folder and gently do both sides. And we're going to put our pocket in. And we're just going to glue that in so that we can move a little bit if we need to. Our glitter glue, glue dries clear, so if you make a mistake, get a little glue somewhere you don't want it, just wipe it off. And it will dry clear, so you should never know it was ever there. Now, if you do that with a glob of it, I'm sure that won't work, but... Get that pressed down good. Once you get it in place, then we'll get this one glued in. Now again, like you had to with your um, skinny notes and other the mini planner and that, you do have to put something on this for a while to give it the memory that it needs to stay bent and closed. But it will get there within a day or two. It will be fine. So now we need to decide if we want to put this on the front or not. I, I'm thinking not. I'm thinking I really like those splotches there, so I'm not going to put that on the front. So that is how you do a simple legal pad holder. You have a little pocket here you can put things in. You've got a cover on your legal pad so it's pretty when you open it and then you have your papers there. So that's it. If you like this tutorial I hope you give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of my videos I hope you'll hit that subscribe button and hit that bell and set it up to see all of my videos. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day and happy crafting. See you next time.